Hi, I'm uh, Maxim, developer of Shadow World. Welcome to the uh, release uh, live stream of the 2.5 updates. I'm just going to go over the, uh, the new features we've added for this patch. It's going to be fairly fast, but there's uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, first of all, there's, uh, we've added uh, a nice uh, smooth transition of uh, LEDs. And we've changed the mesh uh, used uh, when you're uh, updating uh, your Shadow World at, uh, over time. So if you're doing an ocean, we've uh, adjusted the topology of the mesh. So as you can see, if I uh, toggle the ocean mesh update over time, it's going to change the topology. You're going to see all the quads are aligned the same way. And if we update over time, we've adjusted, which uh, better suits the, uh, the requirements of uh, a topology which can change uh, anywhere uh, over time and we can compute uh, an adjusted topology uh, over time is too expensive so this uh, this new topology is fixed and is better suited to uh, render oceans and uh, interactive surfaces okay so we have the uh, smooth LED transition and you can adjust uh, the transition widths, widths. Okay, it's very cool. Um, there's a new uh, seed system, which is uh, much more advanced than what it used to be. You used to only be able to add a couple uh, floats variables. Now there's a seed generator. Seed generator allows you to set up uh, any seed you want. It's actually a, an object. If you go inside the uh, BP folder C generator, you can see I've created one. You see here, you can create your own. You create a blueprint class to look for it. SW seed, and you can create your own C generator. This C generator has an overridable function, which is a generate seed. And what you're doing here is uh, outputting a seed. So if you create, for instance, if you promote uh, this to a variable, and expose it, which is exactly what I did on this uh, demonstration. I exposed world seed. You can access world seed here from the digital panel, and you can add uh, you can add a new kind. Uh, you can uh, in the uh, in the function here, for instance, you can uh, generate uh, render targets. You can do any kind of computation here. It can be fairly advanced. So if you're doing a fast Fourier uh, ocean. You can do all the pre-computation here and uh, output the render target here. Okay, so I don't have any... Uh, thing to add. So the new seed system with an object, it's uh, very powerful. I, I, I made it uh, mainly because uh, we might add an, uh, a fast for ocean uh, later. But it's so usable for terrain. You can, for instance, uh, pre-compute uh, biomes uh, biomes partitioning in the world and some large textures that you could use okay so we've seen the smooth LED transition there's a, a new water effect a new water material for instance first of all uh, we have the uh, water transition you can see there's a, there's a water line that has been added Practical to showcase, but you get the waterline here. A new underwater effect that you can customize. You can change the color, you can change uh, the distance at which you see. Two meters might be too much, uh, too little. You can change the colors. You can really customize uh, what you want. The water effect. Uh, with, um, we've added an option to uh, spawn assets uh, following the slope of the terrain. So, for instance, uh, I'm going to show here. I'm going to add a new spawnable. Here, new spawnable. It's going to be a st static mesh. 
And let's see what I have here. Content. Static mesh. This one. Okay. And I want you to spawn a line to terrain slope. I want you to spawn exclusively on slope, for instance, first of all. So between 30 and I want you to spawn here, for instance. And I want a lot of density. I want so to see it at least 15 meters. 50 meters. Okay. Okay, so it's spawning on the slope, all right. But I want it to spawn aligned to the terrain slope. So it's very useful if you uh, if you want to spawn um, some specific rocks which are sticking out of the mountains. But uh, those rocks have a, a, a up direction. They're oriented. You can just orient it or orient them in any in any direction. So uh, let's say I uh, just spawning quite. Like that, you can see if you want a rock to point towards the uh, interior, you can use the line to turn slope here. Okay, so just maybe notice I forgot to uh, force a recomputation when you're doing this. Here we go. Okay, so now that they're, they're all pointing towards the interior. So if you want to make a rock stick out, a large rock which uh, stick out of the mountains, you can use this uh, this feature to uh, to do it. Right. Um, yes. So in the previous patch, we have did uh, the uh, readback system. So if you want to make uh, a boat, boat or uh, any kind of a uh, runtime spawning, okay, so you have your boat here. Bring the uh, the water and adjusting. But uh, previously, I was using uh, I wasn't intending intending this system to mainly be used on water. But you can use uh, you can use the readback system to uh, sample the ground as well. And uh, if you used it for the ground, you it uh, now can take into account the uh, brushes. So the boat is going to move a bit everywhere, but if you follow the, the spheres, the control point, you're going to see uh, they, are, they follow the terrain around, even on brushes. I'm going to simulate back. Okay, I'm going to capture the bomb. Okay, so here is my boat. Excellent. See the boat is uh, following the terrain. It's normal, but I want to test it on the brush. So I'm gonna bring the boat. Uh, you can test it here. Oh, I duplicated it. Oh, mistake. Get out of here. Okay. So that's one brush. I'm gonna try it on this one. It's following the brush. Okay. It's not really happy that I move the uh, the boat by hand. Okay, so the eight feet back, uh, uh, the option to spawn uh, following the the slope of the terrain. Mm, there's also been uh, some new improvements on the uh, spawning performance. So we've quite. Uh, Pushed, uh, pushed the limit uh, over what you're capable to spawn uh, using a single uh, a hierarchical instance static mesh. Right now, the, the only limitation left of a shallow world regarding spawning asset is that uh, for every variety, for every mesh, we are only using a single uh, hierarchical instance static mesh. So that's a big, the big limitation right now. 
So uh, if you want to increase the performance, if you want a denser vegetation, we would have to uh, put in place a, a partition system, which is using uh, several uh, Yachico instance static mesh uh, over space. So we'll have to partition them and move them around. But right now we're just uh, using a single one. So if you have too many instances inside uh, the same uh, the same instance mesh, it's going to generate quite a bit of itches when you're moving around. That's uh, one of the big limitations right now. Okay. But you can still uh, get around with a lot of vegetation. Like uh, I added some uh, some uh, information on the spawnables to be able to see how many instances you have. So right now this is a tree. I have a total of uh, 117 instances of this tree. And you can see I'm still covering a very large area. And it all fits inside a single uh, instance mesh. One of the new features of the, of the update is the support for uh, uh, virtual shadow map uh, caching. So previously we were rendering the, the terrain as a dynamic mesh. So if you know in Unreal Engine you can render the, mesh in, the meshes in, uh, in two ways. If you take uh, a nanite side of the uh, equation, you can render static mesh, uh, you can render meshes two ways. You have the dynamic pass which is basically uh, computing and sending a bunch of information to your GPU every frame. And you have the uh, static pass. So the static pass is basically caching uh, the, uh, the draw command you want to you send to the GPU. It's also uh, caching the buffer on the GPU. So you don't send things to the GPU every frame. It's much more efficient and it allows, for instance, the, uh, the shadow system of Unreal Engine to, be, uh, to cache the, uh, the shadow map. So, uh, if you check here, for instance, the virtual shadow map cached pages, you can see it's all green because it's all been cached. It's only been computed once and you don't have to recompute it. So it's uh, very efficient in terms of shadows, in terms of shadow computation. But uh, not only is it, uh, is it an improvement for the shadow casting, it's, uh, it's an improvement for the uh, rendering of the terrain itself. So it's been quite, it's quite, it's quite uh, a bit of a challenge because, uh, as you know, uh, it's using geometric clip map right now, and uh, it's basically moving uh, a mesh every frame. So you get to uh, you get to do some low-level editing of the uh, rendering of the mesh in Unreal Engine, but uh, it's uh, extremely efficient. And the ocean is still updating uh, thirty times thirty times per second. Yeah, it actually depends. You can update here. Oceans, how many times per second you want to update it? If you want to make it extremely smooth, you can push it to 60. It's going to be extremely smooth right now. Okay, that's about it. Smooth LED, new ocean, new underwater, uh, water line, caching system for the uh, Rendering, uh, rendering of the terrain, and uh, that's about it. A yeah, large uh, performance improvement on the uh, vegetation spinning. But uh, now the next step will be to uh, to use uh, multiple uh, instance mesh components to uh, really uh, mitigate uh, any uh, itches that might uh, still be here. That's about it.